Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, the beef producer's place to explore new management practices. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the community. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in again. I want to let you know that as a podcast listener, I want to reward you. And so I'm running an exclusive discount for the Rancher Mind program. So in the month of June, if you use the code CATTLE23, you will get $20 off your next Rancher Mind purchase. Folks, that is almost 50% off of a single access event. So go take a peek. And thanks for being a loyal listener. Now, I am absolutely pumped about today's episode because we're going to be talking about embryo transfer work and you as an audience really got to help me determine what the points of conversation are going to be. When I polled you guys on social media, you mentioned you were curious about really, is it worth it? What's the return on investment? So I'm going to be visiting with Craig Gaina and we're going to be talking about you know, how cattle producers can determine if there is going to be an ROI from using embryo transfer work. So Craig is the owner of Recip Solutions, and that's a company that sources recipient cows for embryos to be planted into after those eggs have been collected from donor cows. So once Craig's team has those cows sourced and ready to take embryos, they utilize a Vitelli satellite partner called Reproductive Services LLC to complete the transfer process. Craig also uses this Vitelli satellite to create his own IVF embryos, and he does quite a few of those every year. Now, I want to thank Vitelli for making this conversation possible, and I want to talk a little bit about who Vitelli is as a company to give you guys some background before we get into the conversation with Craig. So Vitelli is a precision livestock company helping producers advance the right genetics faster. They are the fastest growing IVF company in the world, operating in 21 countries with 15 global IVF labs. In the U.S., their growing network reaches 49% of beef and dairy breeding stock. Vitelli delivers the most accessible, reliable, and predictable reproductive solutions, setting the new standard in the IVF bovine reproduction. The Vitelli differentiators include their proprietary IVF media, R&D, and production, seven regional labs in the United States, over 32 U.S. satellite partner networks, their hormone-free IVF process, they have outcome-based pricing, and Vitelli's IVF process is truly a game changer for any operation regardless of your size or goals. So with that, let's dive into today's episode and hear Craig's story. Well, Craig, it is great to have you on the show today. I'm excited. I know um, this is a topic I've been wanting to discuss for quite a while. And the folks on my social media channels have been answering different polls and questions about it. So we could try and figure out what topic and direction we wanted to take this conversation. But before we kind of dive into, you know, talking about your experience with Vitelli and embryo transfer work and how that's impacted your business and operation, I want to, I want you to kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So can you kind of tell the audience, you know, what do you do and um, what does your cattle operation look like? Like, what is that business? Well, Shay, thank you very much for having me on today. Uh, you know, we've, we've got such a huge passion here for the livestock industry and especially the embryo technology and moving the industry forward. We started probably 30 years ago uh, doing some embryo technology work back when, when conventional flushing started. We've throughout the years done an awful lot more as IVF and now, of course, the Vitali. Uh, processes came. We've been fortunate enough to work with some really, really great folks. Of course, all of everyone at Vitali, which is great to work with, and several progressive breeders and leaders in the uh, industry. Today, we run about 1,500 to 1,700 recip cows uh, at all times. Fall calving, we probably put in around 500 to 700 embryos for the fall calving breeding season. And somewhere around 1,000 to 1,500 embryos for the spring breeding season. So you've got a lot going on there. What kind of was your motivator behind starting Recip Solutions? Why did you decide that you wanted to get into the Recip business? So we worked with a company called Piedmonies, Lone Creek Cattle Company, Piedmonies Beef is what they, that's their main business. And 
when they were doing lots of IVF stuff five to 10 years ago is when we really started doing large numbers and just being a part of that innovative thinking. And, uh, you know, that takes a lot of numbers. So I could tell as we were working with those folks and migrating into starting Recip Solutions, I could tell that there was just a, a demand there, a real need to, uh, because everyone's short on Recips, okay? And it just so happens our, our, the way our property and farms laid, I felt like they laid extremely great to lay out a bunch of pins and to get a bunch of that going. So I got the wheels going to uh, start putting in bunk lines and fences and then started working with some folks and especially Vitaly, who's been an intricate part of, of us uh, growing and, and building into more and more numbers. So just our passion, the, the real passion is just the cattle industry itself is, uh, you know, being innovative with all these great progressive folks like Vitaly and all the breeders and friends that we work with that are innovative and progressive. I just know that there's a lot of room to move things forward in the cattle industry, especially from the genetic side, but it takes all of us, right? It takes the, those, those breeders, especially it takes the Vitaly, it takes folks like us that have recips and places that, that they can do it. And, you know, it, we're, we're really fortunate here at our place. We've got a gentleman by the name of Elmer Sandoval and a gal by the name of Dottie Young that both do an absolute amazing job. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be as innovative and as good as we are because they do great. Uh, Jeff Sargent, a friend of ours from Texas, back when we kind of had this concept idea three, four years ago, he's done a great job of kind of getting a lot of embryos and, and different programs from down the Southern area to bring embryos up. That's been a big help getting it started as well. So it takes all of us and uh, we appreciate being able to work with everyone and especially you guys. And yes, that passion is what drives us. The passion for moving things forward is what drives us. And on top of my personality is probably uh, I, I'm not much to sit around. So I love for me personally in the cattle industry, I probably love this as much or more than anything I've ever done because it's fast pace. You either got to be buying some, trying to find some good cows to buy or selling some or moving some out or hauling some for a customer that are ready to go out. It's just, it's really fast pace and there's, there's always some moving part. And that's what I enjoy as much as the innovative part of it. Well, you certainly covered a lot there and thank you for going into detail on that. And yes, it, it does take a team. I know the last time we kind of talked about this topic on the show, I had Chad Wilkerson on and that's something that he really stresses is it takes a team to do this type of stuff. So you have your own herd too, in combination with Recip Solutions, or are you, when you look at beef stuff, is it just Recip Solutions? So yes, we have our own herd. We, we've got pasture and capacity right here in our area for 200 head. So we are aggressive and we've got 100 head of Angus cows that are performance bred with, you know, we raise them. We, we love, because I started in the show cattle world, clear back when I was in high school and college, put myself through college. We like those good looking ones and those extremely great show cattle as good or more than anyone. So we do have a hundred performance uh, bred, but phenotypically we try to make them as show cattle looking and as good looking as we can. So that's kind of a fun herd to go through. I'd love to show anybody that'd like to see them. And then we've got another hundred that, that we're uh, really getting into the shorthorn breed again. You know, we're going to, we're going to run hard at trying to help be a part of that and uh, do what we can. And we're playing with some other breeds, you know, some main Andrews, we're raising some key crosses. So Basically, we've got 100 performance bred Angus. You know, we're hoping to get to about 50 or so uh, short horns and another 50 of just some other things that we'll play around with. That's that passion for trying to raise those good ones, Shay. <laughs> so <clears throat> now remind the listeners where you're located. So we are just south of Lincoln, about 15 miles, little town called, our address is Martell. Uh, we'll probably live a little closer, actually, to a little town called Sprague, Nebraska just 15 miles south of Lincoln. Well, awesome. So when you think about the customers you are serving with Recip Solutions, why are they coming to you? So what 
you know, what pain are you solving for them that they're coming to you instead of, you know, um, raising their own recips or doing that? Why, how are you helping your customers? You know, I think there's two or three parts to that. You know, when you look at those individuals, you know, maybe they don't have the space. So, so they don't want to go buy 20 recips to get 10 pregnancies. Uh, number one, finance and all that. Of course, that takes that to, to do it. You know, finding the cows. So, so here's what I think we do as, as good as we possibly can. Here, here's what our hope is, I guess. So just to start over on that, here's my hope is, you know, we work really hard by almost all of our cows from Western Nebraska. Uh, we've got a couple, two or three guys we work with. One in particular that does a great job for us is Joel Bergren. He buys a lot of our cows. You know, we've got a lot of great cattlemen in Western Nebraska. So with that said, I feel like they are buying better bulls for the most part. Most of those producers, uh, you know, we're ended up getting their open cows. Uh, because they're buying better bulls, we feel like we're ending up with a heck of a lot better recips. You know, those, those cows that we are getting from them, then we take them and we blood type them. So we, do, we blood type for BLV, BVD, Yonis, and North K9. So that's something that I'm not sure all recip programs are doing. Well, you know, then by the time we take those cows that, that pass all that, then we go looking at them for disposition and uh, soundness, how they are on their feet and legs, utter quality and their age. You know, so we, we really call hard. Every 10 recip cows we buy, we're lucky if seven of them make the program. Uh, rarely do we get eight out of 10 that make it. It's normally right around that seven. So, you know, we'll, we gotta buy all those cows. We do all these things to them. And then we've gotta reship those that don't make it. So. You know, our hope is that we are doing all we can to make sure that those cows are the very best quality of cows they can be. So when those folks get them, they're extremely happy and they do a good job for them, right? And it takes an awful lot to do that. It takes a really good person to work with to buy them and Joel Berger. And it takes really good uh, individual like Elmer that's a great manager on our team to sort them for all the other criterias. Then the next part of the equation is the is the uh, nutrition. Uh, Elmer what, managed a dairy for about twelve to fifteen years, and we we're lucky enough to 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 get Elmer on our team. And he's a he's a magic man with nutrition. I, I think uh, he's one of those guys that's lucky. I think he can look at sort feed sources and just know if he took three bites of this, two bites of that, and one bite of that, he'd be just perfect. Because somehow we can get all these cows here, of course, that are in different body stores. And by the time he has them for about 60 days, they all landed about a five to six body store and all look the same throughout the whole farm. You can drive the whole farm. They'll look the same. We are so proud of him for what he does with that. We feel like that helps us in, in being consistent, helps us with our results being consistent. And we hope that... Uh, our customers are appreciating that and seeing that as well. And then Dottie, of course, that that does everything shoot side. That again is part of that. She does a great job of communicating with the customers, making sure their embryos are here, you know, keeping them updated on when they go in. She does a great job. We do all of our stuff gets put on a software called Cattle Max. And Dottie's on top of that every day. Uh, every time embryos are transferred, every time preg checking is, is going on. Dottie is shoot side right with them, enters everything herself in the computer to make sure that we eliminate hopefully every mistake and, and have none. But uh, those two just do a great job. I can't say enough about those two because as hard as I've worked with them and work with them every day to make the big picture as good as it can be for not only ourselves, but our friends and customers, those two are what make it happen every day. So can you walk me through what it would look like? For example, we'll just say, if I wanted to work with you, what would that process look like as far as working with your company? You mean as far as if you'd like to put embryos in? Yep. What would that look sure. like? Sure. Okay. So if somebody, someone calls and they're wanting to put it, they ask, hey, do you have any recips available? We could put some embryos in. The answer is absolutely. Because uh, we're really big on, you know, if... Uh, 
we are just not going to say no. We are going to do everything we possibly can to accommodate every single customer that calls us. If that means we've got to scramble to go buy cows, then we'll do that. You know, we try to start this. We kind of know ballpark where we're going to be in the spring and ballpark in the fall. So we try to have inventory of, you know, we'll normally come into January, February with right at a thousand recips already processed already been sorted on for different criteria is ready to go. So when, when a customer like yourself calls, you know, we're going to say yes, and we're going to do everything we can to try to get those embryos in. The first thing we ask is, okay, what month would you like those calves to be born? And we do everything by month. So what we like to work off of is the, the month that you would like them born. So, you know, the, the customer or yourself would tell us that, we say, yep, we can absolutely get them in. Like right now, if somebody called right now, you know, we're pretty tight. I don't know that we could get very many in for February calving, but we can get as many as folks would want in for March and April calving. So we would first ask you that when you wanted them. And then then uh, I'd get to turn it over to Dottie and she'd work with getting the embryos shipped here. And then once the embryos get shipped here, that's when we physically put you on the schedule board. You know, we've got kind of a Dottie's got a waiting list that she organizes everything. And then once the embryos actually get to our door is when we physically put you on the schedule. And then we, of course, get them transferred that day. At transfer day, we let everybody know, you know, we got a transfer fee of $75. So once those embryos are transferred, we'll, you'll be getting a billing of $75 for that. And then 60 days later, we'll preg check everything. And at 60 days, we'll let you know the results. You'll get an invoice sent to you for those pregnancies, along with all the results of all the embryos we put in. So it's a nice little spreadsheet that Dottie sends out from our Cattle Max system. And then uh, we give you a fifth or a two week window to come pick those recipes up free of charge. After that, we can do long term care, and we're happy to do so as long as we. Uh, Kind of make a plan with you. We're happy to do long-term care. If you need our help, we're happy to do that. Otherwise, we, we uh, give you a two-week window to pick them up. After that, a feed bill does start. And we guarantee those recips uh, to 100-day pregnancy. So that's kind of how our process goes, Shay. So how does Vitelli play a role in that process? Where do they fit into everything you're doing? So we've got a local friend in Brent Nicely that owns Reproductive Services. And Brent is extremely talented inside of a cow, always has been. Clear back from his days when he uh, worked at 21st Century Genetics a long time ago when I met Brent Nicely, which that might even be 30 years ago. And uh, Brent's just really, really talented in a cow. Started, he started a company called Reproductive Services, as I said, where he does an awful lot. You know, Brent was kind of, he was kind of, I wouldn't say one of the pioneers, but not far after the pioneers of the embryo world. Okay. And he went and got certified and, and flushing and putting embryos in and started that company. Brent's uh, location is only about 10, 12 miles from us. Brent then took it upon himself to start working with Vitelli. And that's how I have met Vitelli. And uh, I remember years ago, you know, Brent's always done our embryo work and putting our embryos in and kind of told him the idea we thought about having, you know, building something to increase our, our recip herd and start recip solutions. And he was thankfully supportive of that. And that's kind of how it all happened. So yeah, you know, Vitaly comes into Brent's every single week, almost year round and does anywhere from, I think about 15 to 40 cows a day. And of which we take a fair amount of our donor cows up there as well to put them in and lots and lots of our customers, obviously, cause we're all right here together in the same area. A lot of our customers go to Vitaly over at Brent's place. And, and uh, that's where Vitaly comes in really big is, is just the, I, I think I heard that, that Brent's location is the largest Vitaly source of embryos currently. So I know that there's an awful lot of embryos come through that place because Brent and Squire and, and his wife, Jackie, they do an absolutely phenomenal job. They've got a gorgeous little spot there. They're great to work with. Uh, they do everything top shelf just as we like to try to do. So yeah, Vitaly has been an intricate part of all that, not only with Brent through Brent, but also for us. Thank you for explaining that and walking through the process of 
what it does look like um, to work with your business. Now, when I was asking my audience, you know, what do they want to know about embryo transfer? What are their main concerns about if they do or don't use it in their operations? The number one objection that came up was cost. Like, how do you guarantee that you're going to get a return on investment? Because it's not cheap. Some would say it doesn't come without a cost to put embryos in. So what are kind of your thoughts on that as far as how can producers justify the cost of putting embryos in? Oh, goodness. That's kind of a loaded question, Shay. I know it is. I don't know that I know the right answer to that because there's so many variables in it, as you know. You know, I think that's each producer's got to kind of start with the end of their of their plan. You know, whatever their marketing strategy is, if they're an individual, it's a large producer that sells a lot of bulls and they know they're going to get an average of X for them, you know, back figure it and that works for them. For the individuals that are raising show cattle, you know, if their sales or their, uh, how they've been marketing have been really well and they know that a certain cow or five cows that they've got consistently are the ones that, that raise those cattle that that bring an added value versus just a a normal regular cat run-of-the-mill calf then obviously that's where you would want to go because there, there's consistency right you know but to truly tell your return on investment uh doing this it, it's literally going to come down to the end in my case i'm i'm mostly flushing cows that are proven but there's no doubt that we're flushing some cows that are not proven that's that's I'm sure there's a lot of our customers and friends and producers out that are similar to myself, just have a passion for it, have a passion for trying to raise those really, really good ones and uh, get them out there and get them working for others. And you don't really know, unfortunately, you don't always know your return on investment until that is all complete. But there, there are definitely those cows that we all know we all have in our herds that work better than others, you know, so uh, that's what a lot of people keep their eye on that ball and try not to do too many unproven cows for that reason because of the cost. Okay, Craig. So that is like the 50,000 foot view, that big picture view of ROI. But, you know, as cattle producers, sometimes we really like to focus on, you know, a single event and, you know, what's going to happen now. So what is that ROI on a smaller level if we're looking at a per embryo basis? a good question uh you know one advantage of working with vitaly and and brent runs his business that way as well is is there's no upfront fees uh so it's easier to budget right so you take a donor cow in there and whether she flushes one or 50 it's a per cost fee is what vitaly charges and how they're structured for their billing so it makes it a lot easier for you to budget or know exactly what you're going to be paying because when you get that bill that's the only bill you're going to get you're not going to get three other bills or any hidden fees or hidden costs it's just a per embryo cost which that does help an awful lot uh, especially if you do have a budget or a certain amount you want to spend or don't want to spend or want to invest this year maybe you want to do more next year that is a huge uh, the accounting side of how vitaly does it is great because of that per embryo cost versus a lot of little bills that you don't really know are they add up unless you sit down and figure it all you know, you've talked a lot about, well, I guess you've mentioned little keys and different steps about how you've kind of been successful, but would you kind of outline, you know, what are the key factors that help make the embryo transfer process a success? You know, you talked about nutrition before, but what else goes into it so that you can guarantee that you are as successful as possible? So we feel, you know, being consistent is, 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 so it starts with selection of the cattle, of the recip, starts with selection, uh, then it's, it's nutrition, and then it's consistency. We've got a schedule that we're always looking at. We've got a schedule that, that and a protocol, I should say, slash schedule that we follow exclusively exactly the same on every single set of recip cows. Okay, so we run, we run groups of 80 is what we run. And we've got a big board that we run these schedules on. We've got, and we do them in cow groups of 80. 
and we start groups on Mondays and Fridays. And of course it's a cedar process and just like everybody does, but we've got a certain protocol that we do and we follow that exact protocol, even timing. So, you know, if we do it at eight in the morning and it's scheduled for eight in the morning, the next week or next two weeks or whatever it is, this protocol, Dottie's got a master schedule in her office. And let's say like right now, I think there's 14 or 15 groups of cows sitting there on the board that are, you know, some are done, obviously, waiting until they get preg checked, but there's several that are in the process. Well, she's got a master schedule that she's got every single day. If it's going to be pull seeders, put seeders in, transfer, preg check, whatever it is, whether it be one, three or five groups that need something done. She's got that master schedule that she gets with Elmer every single morning. And they make sure that that all happens with those groups that day. So we follow those exact same schedules and we are consistent every single day. So, th so that to us is what we feel like uh, is the only way we can do it. You know, nutrition be consistent and, and extremely good every single day and be extremely consistent in the process and, and protocols that we follow the same every day. And then we're always looking, always talking to, you know, Brent's been great. As far as trying to help guide us down that, we've got obviously other friends, Scott Larson up at Valentine, that's a great friend and been a mentor for us on several things as well. You know, they, they do a good job of always looking for that next idea or next way to try that maybe we could get better results. So we are always trying to, we're always looking at what we're doing, trying to analyze ourselves and trying to be better. Uh, so that, that's kind of what we feel like is just being consistent and the same. So at least then if you get results, good, bad, or ugly, you know that that part of the equation is, is not what having to do with it. It's probably something else if you've had great results otherwise. Thank you for talking about that. And I, consistency is huge in any business. So I appreciate you uh, bringing that to light in your business as well. Now, I'm curious, every business owner, every cattle producer faces challenges as they work through their operation. What are some of the main challenges that you've faced in your business and how have you worked to overcome them? You know, probably the biggest, it, it, I always think we're going to not have such a learning curve the next year. And every year it's always something it seems like, Shay. Uh, this year, for instance, we had about 600 cows that we had purchased in November, December, had them on stocks in Western Nebraska, all processed and ready to go, open cows. So we're, we get them back to the farm. We're on a group three of spring breeding season. Four of them come through the chute pregnant. Oh, goodness. Elmer, being who he is, runs all four or 500 more cows through the chute, finds 100 of them pregnant. Oh, goodness, that wasn't our plan. So, you know, for instance, that that's been a challenge is open cows. Are they open? So what are we going to do going forward that we've done in the past, but didn't feel like we had to in this group? Every cow will get a lutealized shot before she gets in inventory. Before she's put in inventory, she's going to get the obvious simple little lutealized shot to make sure she's definitely open because that's a challenge, you know. So getting good quality cows and uh, making sure they're 100% ready so you're not trying to scramble at the end because then that, of course, throws off that consistency we talked about that I'm really big on and our team's really big on. So that's probably been our biggest challenge is just cows, just the variables with trying to find recip cows and then making sure they're open on top of making sure they're good and on top of making sure they're not hot with some disease you don't want around the farm. Those three things are, are top on our list, and then it's just – uh, then it's just the everyday stuff, you know, like, like we talk about nutrition and then doing it the same. But but definitely the challenge has been making sure we've got really good recip cows because that's important to me. I know that we bought plenty of recip cows before we started doing this years ago and they weren't all so consistent, and nice and all that. So it's really important to me that we have the very best recips we can for all of our customers and friends. So where do you see this heading in the next five to 10 years as far as more producers adopting it or any other changes in technology? Where do you see the use of embryo work in the next five to 10 years? Well, I think it's only going to increase. The amount of embryos that are done is only going to increase. You know, for instance, the volume of embryos that are, that are, uh, 
done today versus the volume of embryos that were done even 10 years ago has increased a ton. Part of that is, is you know, that the expense has all been, you know, relative, but the, the convenience of it, you know, the Vitale, how Vitale does it now, you know, you don't have to do it like the old conventional ways when you were giving cows shots every single day for a week or two here and and then go and do the conventional flush. It was just slow, right? It was a slower process. So the volume of embryos that were created across the country, like I said, 10 years ago or however long it was, definitely was way less. That was also part of the, I felt like that's what, when, when we met by Tally and, and uh, started working with you folks, that's been absolutely great. That was another part of just the feel of there was going to be a need for more recips because the volume of embryos, because of the convenience of it and how many more embryos you can pull faster guys can, you know, if they're busy, whether it be in the field or they work in town or whatever, you know, loading up the donor cow, running it over to a Vitale site to pull a bunch of O sites, they can make time for that. Getting up, if they travel a lot, getting up, having to go out and give shots every morning or talking their, their uh, somebody, some friend or family member to do it that limited some, right? There's no doubt some people didn't do as much. We're now just the convenience of it and the new innovative technology and ways that, that we're doing things. There's a lot more embryos being produced today than there ever was before, before Vitaly and, and others started doing it the way we're doing it now. Well, Craig, thank you. And as we kind of round out this interview, what final thoughts do you have for people who are maybe on the fence about diving into this technology for their operation, whether that's thoughts or maybe what questions should they be asking themselves to make sure this is right for them? So for those out there that are on the fence, definitely understand the hesitancy if you've never done it before, or maybe don't understand it the greatest, and it is expensive. You know, here's what I would recommend to most is if they've got a passion for doing it they're going to see likely going to see results that they want to see right they're going to own a cow or two that's really good or maybe several but but i would say start slow you know because there's a lot of variables in this there's no doubt there's you know some cows flush really well well those same cows that flush really well those embryos seem to conceive a little better i can't tell you why but it just seems that way you know so just from an extensive expense standpoint those of you that want to do it is the best thing you can ever do definitely start slow when you see the results you want to see and you're happy with that then just dive right into it as hard as you uh have the resources and the space and want to do it because it's definitely fun that you know do it with folks that that you trust uh, I, I know I say the consistent thing all the time but that's probably what I appreciate so much about Vitelli is they're consistent. Their, their staff and administration are not only personable and, and want to know you as a friend, but they're consistently professional. Uh, they're extremely good. You know, the, the Vitale eggs that are put in, the quality is consistent, really good. That I, I feel like that's been a big part of why our success and conceptions have been good on all those Vitale eggs. Uh, so just, just, go to folks that you can trust, whether it be by tally or other firms, that if someone's closer to you, I understand that. Uh, they're, they're all great people in this industry. They all do a really good job. They've all got their own systems and protocols. Just go use people you can trust, start slow, and uh, move on from there. All righty. Well, thank you very much, Craig, for being on the show today and sharing your advice and experiences with everyone out there listening. I really appreciate it. And I know they will too. Good. Thanks for having me today, Shay. Appreciate that. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.